Hello, Dr. Mintz here. This is a, a young woman, relatively young, 37 or so, who has pelvic pain. And I'm going right to the issue here. We get into the pelvis and we've got these three big cystic areas. Okay, so what's going on? Pelvic pain, what's normal here and what's abnormal? Let's see, do we have a bladder? Uh, yeah, okay, there's the bladder. So this is bladder. So we go up, and so this is a normal antiverted and antiflexed uterus that lies on top of the urinary bladder and enhances nicely. So we get above that, and we've got a big cyst out here in the left adnexa. Adnexa, how do I know it? It's adnexal because you can see the uterine isthmus tapering out, out here off toward the fallopian tube with these areas of increased vascularity and a similar appearance over here. So ordinarily if I saw cysts in each adnexal region I would say ovarian cysts, probably ovarian cysts, although an ultrasound would probably be necessary to confirm that indeed the cyst is arising from ovarian tissue, and that's important. There are several cystic things that can happen. You can get a para-ovarian cyst. You can get a cyst of the broad ligament. You can get a hydrosalpinx, a dilated salpinx, which looks like it's a cyst. You can get free fluid, which walls itself off. You can get abscesses, and you can get cystic neoplasms, too. So ultrasound is helpful because it'll actually identify ovarian tissue if indeed this is arising from the ovary. It'll also show the ovary as separate from it and distinct if it is not an ovarian cyst. Well, the wall here looks kind of thick. It just doesn't look like a typical nice clean cyst. Could be tubo-ovarian abscesses, something like that. Let's see if I can get a... Uh, density measurement here. Kind of high for just simple fluid, 25. It should be, you know, single digits, 5 to 15 or 20, something like that at most. So this is not simple fluid. What this is, is a patient with endometriosis. And endometriosis, as you probably realize, is a process whereby the endometrium the lining of the inner aspect of the uterus actually leaks out or is partially expelled into the uh, pelvis, or s that's the theory, and it develops there and becomes and seeds the peritoneal space around the fallopian tubes, and then under then we'll still go through the cycles that the endometrial tissue within the uterus goes through with the various cycle, various phases of the cycle. So this is very unusual. Uh, we don't see endometriosis too often. Uh, it's in the differential when we see cystic adnexal masses, but this is a very unusual case. I think it may be the only one I've ever seen like this where there are discrete, clear-cut, prominent cysts that don't look like normal ovarian cysts in a patient with endometriosis. So that's, that's what this is endometriosis with bilateral endometriomas and probably small endometriomas here and here and they tend often to develop into a, a cystic kind of appearance.